Welcome to segment two of Citizens Forum, uh, Wednesday, November the 13th. Our guest in this segment is Rick Habgood. Rick and I have been friends for a long time. Um, and you want to talk about democracy, which is... Uh, well, uh, it's uh, pretty well your favorite uh, topic, Jack. So I thought, uh, you know, the easiest one to talk about with you anyways. A and you have such a, um, a wonderful definition of democracy. And maybe you could enlighten the folks where it came well, from. Well, yeah, it's years ago I started writing a book about democracy, yeah. which I'm still writing, and I was over at your place one time, and you have this big, thick dictionary, and I thought, hey, democracy. So I looked it up in your dictionary, and that was the best definition I've ever seen. Um, and it, uh, the word democracy comes from the two Greek words, demos, the people, and kratia, to rule. So democracy actually means the people rule. And that's... That's the definition that I believe in. When I think about democracy, that's what it means to me. I think so too. I think that that is, one thing is simple, very easily understood, and I think everybody can relate to it. Everybody can. Like when you think of democracy, you think of the people. If it's not that, it's a dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> the people and the people rule. And I think that this is a, uh, a great definition, you know. And Interestingly, in most dictionaries that you look in today, that isn't the definition. No, it's not the use. definition, no. The definition they use today, mostly, is a democracy is a country where the people elect their government. Yeah. Well, that's very different. In, by that definition, Canada is a democracy. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, but you have to, because when I... Um, I started on a study of democracy and different types of electoral systems, as you know. And today we're going to be talking about first past the post. But what you just said is absolutely true because when I was looking through many different definitions of democracy, it wasn't that particular definition. The people rule. Yeah, and, and the interesting part about it is that that is the early Greek definition of democracy. That's the one that Plato, Socrates, and all those dudes, dudes were the, they're the ones that came up with that particular definition. Um, the definition that we read in uh, Webster's, for example, is British. And as we know, the British have first past the post. So, of course, their democracy is uh, majority rules. Now, and their majority is whoever gets the most votes, which, of course, is first past the post. So it's, it's understandable that they're going to have a different definition. It really is. But I, I'm, I'm with you 100%. That is not a correct definition of democracy. Democracy is, I think, coming from the Greek and Latin, is representation of the people. In other words, the people are represented. You are their representative. And in they fact, rule. The people, the people rule. I mean, if it's exactly. not that, then it is, as you said, it's a dictatorship. So first past the post. The more I look at first past the post, more the more I realize where where the British probably got their sense of humor, you know, because it, it's so it, it's so ridiculously uh, skewered. Yeah, and that um, is the system we use in Canada in all of our provincial that's elections right. and our federal elections. It's called first past. And the it post. hasn't changed that much. No, it has changed a little bit. Uh, you know, first past the post has been used in Britain since the 13th century. And it's actually uh, pretty well the very first uh, democratic electoral system was first past the post, I believe. I believe. Well, who knows? Who knows? Have you heard differently? No, but uh, maybe in, in old Greece yeah, or... Yeah, you know, well, we'll find I've out as we go the, along. Okay, I've heard that the Iroquois nation in Canada had a, a, a way of democracy that was magnificent, although I don't know anything about it. I've just read occasionally that they did have a wonderful democratic system. Yeah, there's different democracies. First past the post is a voting system that doesn't really work well no. for the people of Canada. No, it doesn't work well for the people of Britain. It doesn't work well for the people in the States. Yeah. You know, so the thing is, is that um, 
uh, here's some the uh, the animal uh, uh, the um, interesting points of view of this particular system and uh, one of them is that you know that between the 13th century and 1850 when you elected an MP in Britain you had to elect two of them so when you elected somebody from a riding not just one person but two people actually went to Parliament and the reason being is because the second person was a bailsman and they were called manip manipulators and what these people did was they guaranteed that the peop the person that you elected would show up in in Parliament instead of going on holidays in other words they guaranteed that he would get the work and that was their job so they actually had to put out they were bailsmen that's what they were. So every per, I know, isn't that bizarre? Now you've been writing about democracy. Have you heard that one yet? I've never heard that. Okay, so. okay. Well, anyways, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the website. It, it's very interesting. And so in Britain, when you elect between uh, the 13th century and the 18th century, when you elected somebody, you didn't just elect one person, you elected two. And one of them was a guarantee a gar guarantor who guaranteed that you would show up. Now, that might sound crazy, but uh, that might be a pretty good idea today. So because a lot of these senators don't show up for work for months, and yet we're paying them. <laughs> and that's the reason. Yeah. So you see, they were on to something a long time ago, you know. Um, also with first past the post, you know, there's... Uh, uh, in, in certain writings, uh, this is back uh, the 13th century all the way to the 18th century. Um, like there, I, I'll just give you two examples, uh, although there's many of them. Uh, in, in this one writing called Old Serum, uh, the fellow was elected, elected one MP, right? Two MPs actually went to Parliament. And in Old Serum, uh, there was the constituency was uh, populated by one man, two cows, and a field. And that was a riding. And of course, the one man is the guy who got, you know, wound up going to Parliament. Well, here in, in isn't that isn't that bizarre? Yeah. This is first past the post. Well. Let's bring it up to where we are. Where yeah, we let's, are today. let's move it up today. I well, mean, it's a, actually, it's a system um, that you know, it's funny because we've had we've had two referendums in British Columbia on yeah. changing to to a different system. Yeah. Um, it was interesting watching the media during those two referendums because the role the media took was to never discuss the problems that First Past the Post has, and there. It's a system, I mean, first of all, you get a majority government with 40% of the votes, which means that 60% of the voters have no, no voice whatsoever. But it also leads to things like a couple of elections ago, talking federal elections, the um, Conservative Party, now run by Mr. Harper, although it was still in its former name, which was the Alliance or something like that. Reform. Yeah, Reform, the Alliance. Mm -hmm. They actually got more votes in Quebec than they got in Saskatchewan. But in Saskatchewan, they won every seat in the federal election, mm -hmm. or all but one, mm -hmm. whereas in Quebec, they won no seats. So even though they actually had more supporters in Quebec than they did in Saskatchewan. Yeah. All of those voters in Quebec were completely unrepresented. And the, the, in, in Saskatchewan, it was the opposite, where all the Liberal and NDP voters were completely unrepresented. This happens every election. Yep. It happens right across the country. Yep. It's the worst voting system in Absolutely. the world, I think. Absolutely. And be because it is so easy for the corporations to control the outcome of this election, of this electoral system, the media pretends that it's a good system. They never tell us the flaws. And 
this is a big problem for us because we're stuck with mm -hmm. a system that is at the root of a lot of the problems we have. If, if we could change even to this new, uh, a proportional representation voting system, it would give our country a huge lift, uh, at least a hope of starting to move in right directions. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I think that uh, first past the post is, number one, it's not democratic. When you have, when you can win an election on 40% of the vote, what that means is 60% of the vote voted against you. <laughs> so I would say that the majority of people don't like you all that much. I would say that only 40% of the people like you. Yeah. And 60% don't like you. And they don't want you in power. But there but you But the problem is, is that in the writing, as you said, that 60%, all those votes, all those votes go into the waste paper bin just bang into the basket, never heard from again. So if you live and, in an area... And it's not democratic. Yeah, I mean, if you live in who, an area, who's representing that 60%? Okay, sorry. If you live in an area where, let's say, the liberal always wins, and yep. you vote conservative, yep. why even bother going out to vote? Exactly. It, it's, a, it's a waste Precisely. of time, and it shouldn't be. Exactly. Because in a proportional system, your vote counts. That's right. And I would say that the the more progressive and better and best countries in many ways in the world now are using proportional representation systems and Absolutely. I think if we did that in Canada it would benefit us. That's the only reason I want it is because I think it is more democratic and it's a, it's a crime that that we've been unable, you know, and you can say, well, you know, in the first, in the first referendum we had here, 57% of people voted to change to a proportional system. And somehow, uh, under the rule, the autocratic rule of Gordon Campbell, 57% lost mm. because Mr. Campbell didn't want to change. Mm -hmm. And 43% won mm -hmm. because that's what Mr. Campbell wanted. And the NDP yeah. wanted it yeah. and the media wanted it. Yeah. So it happened. Yeah, yeah it, it's sad. It's really, really, really sad because I, I think that when uh, these people, these uh, politicians uh, here in British Columbia and across Canada, I'd say most of them, you know, talk the talk about being for the people and representing the people and all the rest of it. But when push comes to shove, when they really want to put in a system that actually honors, that actually honors the the uh, the, the people that they represent, they they won't go for it. It's just like this, the STV, and you and I interviewed uh, John Horgan. Do you remember that? Yeah, on, on the ago. radio show. We that? used to have a radio show. Okay. We I know. And, and you know, yeah. uh, I asked John, I, I, I uh, this was after the election, and I asked John, I said, well, John, where, we used to, where did you stand on STV, single transfer uh, vote? And he goes, oh, I, I voted for it, Rick. And I said, you voted for it? And he says, yeah, I voted for it because my daughter wanted me to. And I thought to myself, that's got to be the worst reason in the whole world to vote for STV because your dog, why, why not vote for it because you want it? Why not vote for it because you want change? Instead of, you know, this, this system of, uh, this dictatorial system of first past the post. And anyways, it was one of the moments in history that the NDP just blew. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, they blew it. You know, they had the opportunity, if they had a spoke out, if they had, you know, the backroom boys didn't want, you know, they still clutched the power, right? This is what it's all about. First past the post, as you know, is all about power. It's got nothing to do with representing the people. And when you vote in a first past the post system, you're not vote, you're voting for a party. That's what you're doing. You don't, the, the people, the public, are only secondary uh, pawns in, in the game. What really matters is the party. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Now you so that's what you're voting for. You're not voting for the public. And you were in Germany recently. Yes. And 
Germany has a first Germany has a proportional representation they system, do. a very good form of proportional representation. Right. And I, I think you spoke to people there who linked some very progressive things in Germany to the fact that they have a more democratic voting system. Yeah, well, you see, there is something that Canada, BC, uh, could really pick up on it if, if, if we were at, we, if we were blessed with progressive politicians, like politicians that actually cared about uh, you know the public, then uh, this first past the post, which is a terrible, it's a dictatorial system that should not exist <laughs> anywhere really. You know we should get rid of it. In Germany, you're absolutely right. Uh, the fellow that you're referring to is a fellow by the name of Heinz, and he was a, a, a German uh, social scientist. And, and, Heinz, and Heinz said, which is what we're going to talk about in the next segment, which is a month from now, <coughs> Heinz said that proportional representation is the engine that drives the democracy. He says, but you have to have all the parts of that engine working in unison to make it work properly. He said, just because you have proportional representation doesn't mean that you're automatically going to be successful. You have to use that and use it to build a social democracy, he said. So we're going to talk about that a month from now. You know, that's what the next segment is going to be about proportional representation and how that actually affects not only the general public but also corporations and the media and it has a definite different there's not this this infighting all the time there's more of a cooperation because there has to be yep. I, I agree it's 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 a way forward I think um, it's got to be yeah. fair vote Canada. That that we want to you know if you want to be a part of this process of changing our electoral system, uh, you can go to fairvotecanada.ca and learn all about it and become part of it because that's what we need. And I, and and I'm not a representative from Fair Vote yeah. Canada. And neither are you, but I know we both support that. Yeah. I think it's a step towards giving us the ability to control our country so that's, that's right. why I think we should do exactly. it exactly thank you Rick thank you Jack thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Farm mm -hmm.